Here it is, our 100th episode of Digging Into Topics the Insiders Wish We Wouldn't. Today, we're going to talk about the federalization of our local police, and at the end of the episode, I'll announce the five winners of the question we asked last week. I'm Robin Kinderman, and you're watching JBS Straight Talk. Following the 1965 Watts riots, American opinion editor Gary Allen exposed the creation of the Law Enforcement Assistant Administration, LEAA, as a scheme to federalize police. In his Fed Cop Washington Grabs for Police Power article, Allen stated, First, we must recognize that the problems which all of this new deferral anti-crime legislation is supposed to solve have been artificially created, and by many of those who now pose as friends of law and order to offer federal solutions. The John Birch Society led the fight to have the LEA defunded and abolished in 1982, but that doesn't mean the insiders gave up. They have advanced their agenda in more recent years with the creation of the Department of Homeland Security and their fusion centers after the 9-11 attacks. With over 75 fusion centers already in the U.S., the scope of their use grows more and more. Just recently, Minnesota police have teamed up with private security firms in anticipation of violence over the placement of the tar sands pipeline. This partnership was spearheaded by the fusion center in Minnesota. According to an article on thenewamerican.com, while fusion centers were originally established to facilitate counterterrorism intelligence sharing, they have increasingly played a role in monitoring, interpreting, and criminalizing political activity. The DHS is equipping squad cars with facial recognition software, license plate readers, and stoplight video feeds, all in the name of preventing violence. By the way, all of this information is being funneled to the FBI, where they can watch live feeds. In his book, The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, author William Shire wrote, a national police force with unlimited powers is one of the most important characteristics of a totalitarian dictatorship. Every dictator knows that people will try to overthrow him because nobody wants to be enslaved. So as soon as he takes over, he forms a secret police. When people begin organizing, the secret police lock them up. Without such police power, the people would rise up and overthrow the dictators. If this sounds unrealistic, take a look around. With all the chaos and anti-cop rhetoric in the streets, police departments are drawn to federal grants that offer new gear, better weapons, and armed vehicles. What they don't realize is the federal strings attached to those grants. Federalization of our local police is as big of a threat today as it was in the 70s. To learn more, go to our Support Your Local Police action page on jbs.org. We have plenty of videos, articles, and literature that address this problem and what you can do to stop it. All right. So last week, we told you that for our 100th episode, we would be unveiling a prize, and you had a chance to win by answering a question. The question was, where are you watching from? And the prize is, drum roll please, our very first brand new Straight Talk mug. And here are our lucky winners we will be contacting through email. If you didn't win this time, don't worry. We'll be asking a question on each episode for the next five weeks. The question this week is, what signs of federalization or militarization of police have you noticed in your community? Click on the link below to post your answer. Until next time, take care and God bless.